Let's talk about secure messaging apps. These are, of course, apps used to send not just messages, but also pictures, videos, web links, pretty much any type of media that you can think of. And the secure part typically means that the communication is done over some type of an encrypted channel to keep people from snooping on your conversation. Now, this sounds like a good thing, since most people are using some type of messaging apps for their primary communications, but obviously not all of these apps are created equally, and some may even be considered an outright trap since they are created by companies that are notorious for harvesting your data. So rather than just reading the sales description uh, of an app before downloading it in the Play Store or looking at some reviews that might not have even been created by a legitimate person. There's a certain set of criteria that we should just be judging these apps against before we go ahead and download them, sign up to them, and give these apps our data. And that is, is the app open source? How does the app make its money? Does it use end-to-end -end encryption for the communication? And does that encryption have forward secrecy? Is the platform decentralized? And can you sign up for the app anonymously? So our first question, is the app open source? This is necessary for some pretty obvious reasons because when an app is closed source, meaning that it is only released as a binary, well, the source code to generate that binary is kept secret by the developer, it becomes very difficult to tell what that app is actually doing because when you go to look at a binary, well, that's all that there is in it, just ones and zeros. So you can't really figure out what these ones and zeros are doing, even when you use a forensic program to actually walk through the machine code of this binary, it can still be very hard to get down into the nitty gritty of what exactly the application is doing. For all we know, a closed source messaging app could be forwarding exact copies of our messages with timestamps and all of the metadata data to an archive server somewhere in a government facility. You see, using a closed source software is a lot like having food at a restaurant when you have an allergy. You could inform your waiter of the ingredients that you're allergic to, but unless you actually go into the kitchen and watch the chef prepare your meal, you probably won't know for sure if they did it right until you eat your food and wait for an allergic reaction. The code availability also goes hand in hand with the encryption setup, because if you do not know what the source code of this app is, it's going to be very difficult for you to know what type of encryption it's using or even if it's using any encryption at all in the first place. It's also imperative that you use a messaging app that actually has end-to-end -end encryption. The reason why is that with standard messaging encryption, the contents of your message are only encrypted when going to the messaging server or when exiting the messaging server. But while your message is inside the server, it is decrypted to plain text at the entry gateway. And this is very bad because we have no idea what software is actually running on this server. It could just be doing a simple logging of each message that comes through it to a text file, which nobody who is using a so-called secure messaging app would want. With end-to-end -end encryption, however, the decryption is done on the recipient's device. So the messaging server cannot see the contents of our message. They can only see the recipient who it is meant for. And speaking of messages being read by people other than the recipient, it's important to consider the legal jurisdiction of both the company and the company's infrastructure that this app is going to be running on. If a company who owns this app is in the legal jurisdiction of one of the Five Eyes countries, that would be Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the UK, and the United States, then it is likely that the secure communications of this app will be challenged by one or all of these governments. 
And this challenge could manifest as a subpoena, coercion, threats, or downright jailing the owners of the company for not handing over any data that they might have for the purposes of, you know, any made up reason like fighting terrorism or fighting drug cartels. But this concern is not as major if the company can manage to not actually log any useful data for government spooks in the first place. They can send subpoenas and send threats all they want, but all the company is actually able to hand over is useless information. And it's also important that the app uses forward secrecy. So forward secrecy takes encryption to a whole nother level by using a different encryption key for each message that is sent back and forth. Because if a hacker is able to somehow obtain the encryption key for a conversation, then they would be able to decrypt that whole back and forth exchange into plain text. But since forward secrecy produces a new key each time, a hacker would at best only be able to decrypt a single message. It's also handy to have some sort of a secure or some sort of a self-destruct mechanism for your messages so that if you want to be very sure that the messages don't get hacked, even by somebody that may have stolen the device of your contact, the messages will be deleted after a certain period of time. So if the hacker does manage to unlock your friend's phone, if you have a self-destruct mechanism implemented, the messages will be gone before they can actually be read. And our next criteria is, how does this app make money? Now there's a saying with free as in cost software that when a software or a program is free, you, the end user, are the product. Now this may be true in terms of programs like WhatsApp or sites like Facebook and other social medias, but there is plenty of software that is free as in cost as well as free as in freedom. And typically, the profit models for these types of programs are either donations or offering a more premium version of the application or support for the application at a cost, or the company may also be involved in other businesses like selling hardware, or maybe they will only charge large corporations to use their product. So it is possible to have open source software uh, freedom respecting software and still be able to make money off of it. You just have to look at how the company actually goes about making its money. And the final criteria that I use for judging the true security of a secure messaging app is how decentralized it is. Now, decentralized can mean a few different things with respect to an application. Um, so I'll try to cover the most relevant ones very quickly. So is the app OS independent? Meaning, do you have to use it on a proprietary system like Windows or the Mac OS? And do you have to use a specific version with specific patches? Or can you use it on something better like Linux or BSD? Are you required to use the same servers from the company that created the application? Uh, do they give you more than one server to use? Is there a specific server that you have to run? Or better yet, can you run the app on your own servers in a peer-to-peer -peer way? And finally, is the application federated? Meaning, does it allow its encryption to be integrated into other applications? Does it allow uh, technically different users who are using different programs to actually communicate with one another? Or does it require everybody to be using the same exact program? The more of these criteria that the app meets, the more decentralized it is, and thus the harder to compromise uh, the application or the network would be. So now you have the information that you need to give a litmus test to any messaging apps that you might be considering. Or if you just want my opinion, Signal would be the most secure messaging app for most people. 
It's open source, it provides end-to-end -end encryption, it has legitimate sources of funding, and it has never given sensitive records to, over to any of the Five Eyes governments before. And Signal is also very user-friendly. So it's something that you don't have to be super technical to use. You can just download it from your app store and then hit the ground running. However, Signal does require a phone number to sign up for it. So if you need an anonymous messaging app, then I would recommend Briar. You should download it though through FDroid over the Tor network so that you are downloading it in an anonymous way. And obviously practice containerization of your data by not using the Briar device for heavily tracked browsing like social media. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like and share it so that other people can benefit from it as well.